Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Planet Zoo where I'm... What am I doing? I'm clear. Oh yeah, I made a bit of a dent. Sorry. Oh, there's a bit missing there. <laughs> well, let's start this one again. Hello you, welcome to Geekism. Welcome back to Planet Zoo where I thought this video started with me clearing out a, uh, a sea lion uh, exhibit that didn't end up working out, but it, it isn't there, so I must not have recorded the bit where I cleared out the sea line exhibit. So now you're just looking at the start of the new exhibit, um, which is going to be for a, a cougar, a Eurasian cougar, I, I think is what they're called. No, that's not right. An Eurasian lynx. There you go. It, it's kind of the same. It's a little bobcat type wildcat thing. Um, very cute. Really, uh, really awesome. Uh, looking creature and super fun to build for as well. Uh, this habitat isn't particularly based on anyone in particular. I'd Googled the usual, you know, had a look at zoo chat and, and all those kind of things, but uh, nothing really stuck out at me. Um, the one thing I did notice, though, is that pretty much all of the uh, the habitats for these creatures are either completely indoors because the uh, the temp needs to be uh, really quite controlled, especially in the places where it's uh, a bit hotter because these prefer slightly cooler temperatures. Um, but also I think it's probably just a uh, logistical thing as well to manage them because these things climb and they climb everywhere and uh, and that kind of explains why there's been a bit of a gap between this one and the last one. Uh, it's not burnout, it's nothing like that. I've actually been playing this game quite a lot and enjoying myself with it but man did I have trouble with this little fucker climbing everywhere <laughs> which you'll see uh, as we move on but one thing was i uh, one thing i did notice was that all of the exterior versions of these habitats um were caged they were they were either completely caged uh, as in you know the roof over the top as well or they used what i tried to do here which is like a, a straight vertical wall and then uh, they sort of angle inwards into the habitat so they just can't get up and over um, with the uh, with the creatures and, and that seems to work in real life does not seem to work in this game but again I'm getting ahead of myself one thing I had a real blast with in this one was building the uh, the terrain space uh, this was uh, I, I can't remember where it was because like I say I just spent a good while looking at zoo chats and a few other uh, resources for uh, for pictures of zoos so I can't remember exactly where this was, but it was a very loose uh, interpretation of it. So I don't feel like it's worth me going and trying to find it again for you because it doesn't really look anything like the one that I looked at. But I did get some inspiration uh, from this idea of uh, a water with uh, lots of sort of fallen trees or logs across it uh, that the uh, the links can sort of uh, move across. Uh, I think the original one I found, it was actually almost like a moat. The, uh, the interior... Uh, habitat led out onto a small sort of island or well not even an island because it's you know it, it, the, the water only went three ways around what did you call that like a peninsula I guess like a little peninsula that had a moat all the way around it uh, which was pretty sweet but it was pretty large and again we are trying to keep the idea of budget a thing here in this zoo um, and these are relatively small creatures and all the other ones I looked at were actually relatively small spaces this one was just like it was it must have been like the best ever Eurasian lynx habitat in the world it might not have even been Eurasian it was but it was a lynx habitat um, but yeah they had this awesome sort of moat that went around and then loads of fallen trees across it that gave the lynx loads of space uh, to climb and scratch and all that sort of stuff um, there was uh, the, the, the the links in the game doesn't really use the logs to crawl across, although it can. You know, I've checked on the uh, traversable area and it does class as traversable. But, uh, but yeah, it doesn't really do that. Just bringing him on to another uh, tip that a few of you left in the comments, and that is that since I last sort of played heavily in this game, they've added a lot of features into Sandbox where you can specifically turn off certain aspects of animal welfare and, uh, and behavior. Um, I had a little play around with it in this episode, but I'm definitely going to look at putting in more of that because one thing I did notice is that you can turn off poop um which as i know it sounds silly like why are you gonna turn off poop like it's fine the guys just come in and clean it up but that's pretty much the only thing that's holding me back from from designing some of these habitats how i would like to because i always have to be conscious of the staff members being able to get to all areas of the habitat as well as the animals and uh, i think correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but i think that's because um 
that that they they have to go and get the poop. I can't. I don't think there's another reason they have to go across because the other thing they clean up is like old food and whatever. But obviously they're only going to place the food down where they can access it. Uh, I don't think they need to get to the water. I think I've turned water degradation off, but I'm pretty sure that just runs from machines elsewhere anyway. If you have that turned on, so I think the only reason that staff have to get to every aspect, uh, every area, sorry, of the habitat is to clean up poop. So if we turn poop off, then we can make habitats where the animals have to use climbing structures to get from one area to the other i suppose the only problem you have then is that they might not use the climbing at all if there's no food on the other side i suppose we what we need to look at doing is putting some uh, enrichment items that don't use food onto one side and the bedding and the food will be on the other side and then hopefully that's enough for them to use the climbing structures across i don't know it just yeah it just seems to be that unfortunately the animals will take the path of least resistance more often than not um so you really have to have a reason for them to use the climbing uh, equipment or, or logs or whatever else you place down otherwise they'll just sort of steep to the ground and um like i kind of get it from a programming point of view but it would be really nice to I feel like they should have much more. Oh, but that's the other thing somebody said actually was that maybe actually that climbing is part of enrichment. So you, if you have all of the enrichment turned off and you just have them all at 100% happiness all the time, they have no reason to go and climb. So that might be another reason to, 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 to turn that down again. So maybe I just go for uh, habitat space and poop are the two things that I turn off because the only real problem I have with building habitats is that you have to build them too large. I'm actually quite happy keeping the uh, the, the sort of ground textures and the fauna, uh, sorry, the flora even, to, to sort of set habitats as far as the game is concerned. I actually quite like being told, here is the palette of trees that you can use in this habitat to keep the animal happy, because I do find that um, a little bit of um specificism specificism I, I, every week i make up a word There's a little bit of sort of control uh, sort of begets uh <laughs> design i don't know what i'm trying to say i think sometimes if you have all of the options available it can get a little bit overwhelming whereas if you click you know europe uh, temperamental or whatever, uh, temperamental, temperate, uh, and it gives you sort of 10, 11 trees you can use. Then I quite like having that as the as the rules, or so to speak, of the habitat. So that's what I do here. It's just, you can see there, Europe, uh, Asia, grassland, taiga, tundra. That's everything the lynx is happy with. And then I like being able to use that as part of the palette. Lots of this moss around because this is a this is a damp habitat you know it's in england so it's going to be a damp place anyway but also you've got this sort of water here that um i tried to make make it look that it's not completely stagnant by having it go into a man-made tunnel to the left there so that the, you suggest that there is some way of them sort of flushing it out or whatever even though i did want to try for a change a, a more natural um water feature here as opposed to the sort of smaller pools that we do that usually work with concrete um again anything that where it would be stagnant uh, they kind of need to be concrete because they need to be cleaned a lot whereas here i wanted to try and get the idea that this water was slightly flowing even if only yeah only slightly a few trees in here got to be careful with the trees because the little buggers will climb up them so uh, we're keeping just a couple of them right in the middle of the uh, the habitat there uh, then i'm starting to build the interior of the habitat as well uh, again implied interior definitely the way i'm going to go forward with these from now on it makes it makes my life uh, so much uh, more enjoyable to uh, with my time in the game weird thing here where the door would not raise up to the to the um to the ground you can see there I had to take it away put it back in put the door back in put the pen you know we know what the path is like in these games right we deal with it we move on um yeah so once again implied uh, interior here so we actually box in a um a keeper hut there always like to try and get the windows out on these because i do think it is nice to have those windows with just a little peek inside uh, occasionally I think that's a good uh, a good little thing uh, and then we put one of those animal gates on the other side of this door here so it does look like there is an interior area that the animal can go to although it is like i say implied it doesn't actually uh, it isn't actually a space the uh, the links can get to um uh, apart from that you can maybe spot the mistake i'm making here with this fencing uh, i checked that the mesh wasn't climbable and it isn't i was like oh great this mesh isn't climbable it maybe should be especially for some smaller animals but nope the mesh isn't climbable no problem let's build it out 
the wood is climbable and that's the problem the lynx here climbs up the wood and once it's climbing I, it must be something to do with how the animals are programmed and it's not a problem it's not a wrong way of doing it it's just an interesting little uh, sort of widget as to how it happens it seems that the mesh does act as a barrier for the creature but when it's climbing it doesn't so what happens is it starts to climb up the wood and it can rotate around the wood and then suddenly be outside the habitat and that was the problem i was having um it was just climbing over and over again you'll see here with this brickwork that i'm building i wanted this to kind of look like again i forget to use the faux bricks they should have done that because i wanted this to look like fake wall uh, fake brick here um but i wanted to do a little bit of a water feature coming off uh, you know clearly sort of fake water feature basically just a hose that points down um but i think it turned out pretty good the uh i was originally i think you'll see a very quick bit of footage here where i try and make it so that this water looks like it goes down from there into the main area uh, just couldn't get it looking funky so i just literally made it so that that is a, a small water there that just goes straight into a vent you'll see it's basically a space for the Asian link to go and sort of you know swill itself off or what have you and also just to bring a little bit of movement a little bit of dynamicism to the to the space um yeah so it's this fake brick here and then we actually box the back of this up later on with um with like concrete so it really does sort of look like a, a fake brick area but you see as i'm building that it definitely tears inwards you know there is a, a clear sort of uh you know sort of ledge that the uh, the links can't get up and onto and uh, and then we but we still sort of keep this going here just for safety again looking at it afterwards it it definitely keeps the animal in as far as the game is concerned but probably you know in real life this one would need a, a another layer of um another layer of sort of you know stoppage for the animal perhaps a, a you know like a hot wire running around the top of this thing i think would probably be enough to to solve the problem um hot wire for those you don't know it's basically a, a, it's electric fence honestly just it's hot wire sounds nicer um but it's a very mild electric shock that's just enough to kind of keep the animal away um the zoos obviously have moved away from them a lot now they try to have more sort of natural or or faux natural uh, ways of keeping animals inside habitats um but yeah it is still a thing that you do see when there's very little else you can do uh, and uh, and especially on animals that would cause a, a large amount of damage to people or the uh, or property um like rhinos very often still have some hot wire because it, it doesn't it doesn't really apparently this I'm, I'm this is all third hand coming to you now so you know take all this with a grain of salt but um apparently it doesn't sort of harm them that much at all it's just enough to make them go oh god that's annoying let's get out of here kind of thing um but then that's why you see a lot of those bigger animals either they have big moats uh, or dry moats or uh, or they're built into pits again all things that they're trying to move away from there but at some point you have to remember that these are wild animals uh you know at heart and um and as cute or lovely as and all the lovely work that we're doing with them uh, they will still think nothing of just you know ripping you to shreds if they could i'm sure uh there you go wow look at that i think i posted a picture of that on twitter and just said like hey i'm still enjoying planet zoo but this video may be a little late because i'm having a hell of a time um tried a couple of fixes here honestly the first one was to turn the null barrier i, I got rid of it i got rid of the footage of this happening but the first one was to turn the null barrier into a glass barrier instead and then just kind of put the glass where the mesh is so it still looks like a mesh habitat but there's glass there didn't really work the ground was super uneven even when i did get it to work in some places uh it wasn't you know it still kind of looked a bit naff because it just looked like glass it was too shiny um it was actually simply savannah another awesome content creator that you should definitely go and check out i think i mentioned her last week as well uh, it was her who said replace the wood with these pieces which are they're like metal pieces from the australian pack and they're recolorable and they're not climbable and uh, and that will uh, solve your problem so unfortunately the last bit of this video is actually pretty dull it is literally just me going around and replacing every single one of these pieces of wood uh, these planks of wood and the mesh together did not play nicely with the gizmo 
a lot of the time if you do like a vertical piece and a horizontal piece but keep them all at least on a single plane you can move the you move them around nicely with the gizmo this didn't like it as soon as you selected two or three of these pieces the gizmo did that thing where it just goes and just like turns a few degrees for no particular reason um so unfortunately it was a case of going in and replacing every single one of these singularly by hand uh it wasn't so bad though you know i put some music on i watched some videos um this is most likely the last video I'm going to be recording in my current property. I am moving out. I get the keys to my new place tomorrow as I record this audio. Um, although I'm not doing my big move for a few more days. So for a few days, I'm just going to be running boxes over with, uh, you know, little stuff in. And then I've got, I've ordered a U-Haul um, for a few days time to move over bed frames and all that sort of thing. And then we've got the internet coming the day after that as well. So I think I'm going to be pretty busy for the next few days uh, as soon as the internet's up and running do something else but yes this probably will be the last video in my uh, current place before i move out into my own place um uh, for those of you who don't know i've it's mentioned on videos and on twitter and stuff me and uh, my uh, wife have separated so um yes i'm moving into uh, an apartment just across from town um so it's going to be exciting it's nerve-wracking but you know it'd be the first time ever for me living alone i've always at least lived with friends uh, since moving out of my parents house 20 years ago now no not quite 17 years ago something like that um i've always lived with at least friends or, or then partners so uh yeah so it's going to be interesting to live on my own I, obviously i'll have my son with me half of the time um uh but yeah it's just going to be me uh, sort of running the shots so it's exciting but also very nerve-wracking but it'd be interesting to see how we move forward uh, but there you go all the bits and pieces are replaced you'll see there we go as soon as it updated all the climbing problems are gone throw some trees around for the glamour shots uh, a lot of these won't stay this is literally so it doesn't just look like a bare space because uh, it's not it's a link space haha -ha! there's your dad joke for the episode uh, and there you see the links pottering around there thank you so much for watching uh, hope you've enjoyed it the tribulations of me trying to figure out how to make non-climbing pieces work <laughs> it was good fun and i'm really happy with how it turned out it's that nice mix of uh fun looking game but also you know relatively realistic in the fact that it is just a big cage and sometimes zoos just have big cages in them and uh, i think that's something we need to think about as we build stuff uh let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next always looking for animal suggestions uh, i think somebody mentioned beaver i think we might be looking at beavers next uh love you all to bits until the next one be good